let's continue with more interaction design models and methods. And that is 5w1h, who, what, when, where, why, and that 1h is how. So when, when do we use this model? Well, I've been saying that to design a good experience, you have to understand people and their needs, right? How do we know what users want? Well, this is where 5w1h model comes. The answers to these uh, six questions reveal the context of views. Who are the target users? What are their tasks? How are they performing the task? I mean, their tools and technology, and where, where are they using the product? The environment. And why do they need to use that specific product like that? Oh, and let me explain uh, 5w1h as an UX design step. As I said, we need to have to find the answers to these six questions to make a better design for the users. These questions will also help you to make uh, a persona. Next class we will be discussing. Okay, let's see the details of this model first. Um, who? Who are the users? What are their characteristics? What knowledge and experience do they bring to their tasks? And are, they, are, are there different user groups? If so, what distinguishes them from each other? And which user groups are most important uh, for your product? Next question is what? What do the users do? What are the tasks they need to ac accomplish? You need to understand their tasks as a whole as well as the tasks that related to the product or system that you're designing. How? How do they perform the tasks? While what asks about the tasks people perform, how asks for the details of how they perform those tasks. For example, paying a credit card bill is what someone does. How, how they paid gets into the detailed individual steps involved in the task. Where? Where are the tasks? Oh, I mean, where are these people when they perform their tasks? Which physical characteristics of that environment affect how they perform their tasks? Lightning conditions, temperature, noise, interruptions, privacy, space, interactions with other people, physical moment, and other conditions of the location could influence how they perform the tasks. When? Uh, when do they perform these tasks? Are they in a hurry or can they take their time? Or how often do they perform these tasks? If it's something they do every day, they can learn and remember how the system works. If it's something they only do a few times a year, it's unlikely that you can rely on them to learn and remember how to use the system. Why? Why do they perform these tasks? What are they really trying to accomplish? People perform tasks because they want to achieve high level goals. For example, people use personal financial software to update their records of their bank and credit card accounts to pay bills. Those are their specific uh, lower level tasks, but their higher level goals are to feel more control over, over their finances, to better understand and control their spending and to save money. Supporting users' task is m merely the minimum. Helping them better achieve their true goal is what leads to an excellent user experience. Uh, Okay. 
Okay, when designing a system, an interface, we also need to know about the term mental models. Mental models are how you think something should work, like uh, a button looks like a, a printer, so it should print my essay, something like that. Mental model is a concept, a uh, framework or world, world view that you can carry around in your mind to help you interpret the world and understand the relationship between things. It's a person's internal represent, uh, representation of external reality based on their learning and experience. Like you saw a printer before and you know how the printer looks like, how it work, how it works. And that is the mental model of a printer. That's why in digital world too, you can use printer icon to print something. You can say, we are always comparing our mental model models with the real world. When it comes to mental models, there are two things to differentiate. First is a system model and second is interaction model. Here. The system model is how something how something works and the interaction model is how to interact with it, how to use it. Okay, this side, engineering, this side, engineers, uh, developers, uh, programmers have good system models because they would say, for example, I know how car works, but not how people drive it. And for this side, interaction model, users would be saying, I know how to drive but not how the car works. But you, you guys, the designers, we, we need to understand both, both sides and fill the gap to make a good car interface design. We have the hardest job, don't we? But we are not designing cars in this class, but the websites, applications um, should be good and complicated as that. You get what I mean, right? Mm. And of course, designing needs to be perfect because bad de interface design can kill someone. Really, written, literally, like computers used in medical field, for instance, if the screen shows wrong heartbeat number, it would kill someone, wouldn't they? That's why we need to be careful and to do what uh, to do that we need another checklist to check when designing a system designing an interface and that is a design evaluation heuristics there are 10 of them uh, first is visibility of a system status it's about uh, letting the users know what is going on is it downloading the crack or not Second is a match between uh, system and real world. Like the printer example, printer icon or hand icon should do what hands or printers do. Third is user control and freedom. For example, undo what you have just deleted because the photo of your friend sleeping has to go online. I'm just kidding anyways. <laughs> The fourth is uh, red color, I mean consistency and standards. Uh, for example, red color is for cancel button, not continue. It's the standard, okay. And fifth is uh, error prevention. Less experienced users should be able to not to make a mistake easily in your design. Sixth is recognition rather than recall. Let the lazy, I mean, busy users not to think much. Seventh is flexibility and efficiency of use. Users should be able to see the website on their phones, tablets, any 
devices. Okay, eight is aesthetic and minimalist, uh, minimalistic design. Um, let the users, it's about let the users not spend much time on unimportant stuff. Uh, eight is help users with errors. Help the users find and fix the errors they made. Okay, finally, help and documentation. Provide with manuals, like how to do tips. Okay, let's see them uh, with more examples and uh, professional looking descriptions. First is visibility of system status. As it says, users should always be informed of system operations with easy to understand and highly visible status displayed on the screen within a reasonable amount of time. Like these examples, how the download or installation process is going on, or how many steps left to buy a new shoes or a chair, or whether the page loading is stopped dead, or is it still trying to finish the loading the page. Let them know, let the users know, we are frustrated and too busy to wait. The second is match between system and the real world. People presume uh, presume how the system could work based on their experience with other systems that are similar. An extreme example is a squeomorphism design, which transfers all details of real world objects into the software. Well, for the squeomorphism, it is the design concept era of making items represented resemble their real world counterparts like these uh, smartphone icon designs even in today's minimalist world dozens of design clues persisted from the squamophism era like app apps like the compass or the calculator or design components like folders or lock icons also not only visual images, but also language and concepts from the real world help users to easily understand the system because they have the mental model as we mentioned previously. That is why the app for storing cards is called Wallet. We are using bookmarks for saving our favorite websites. We use trash can to remove old files or the shopping cart while shopping online. By using language that people are familiar with, you can help users overcome the initial awkwardness. The third is uh, user control and freedom. You offer users a digital space where backwards steps are possible, including undoing and redoing previous actions. Users have got to have the control or they would just leave the app or web from frustration. Uh, look at these examples. People easily do mistakes, so we need undo control C function. People need to turn off or hide what they are doing with easy to reach and click button. Or maybe you might want to revive, revive your files if you deleted them on purpose. Um, am I still recording? Yes, I am recording. All right. Bam, 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 bam. <gasps> okay, and um, uh, sorry. So, fort is consistency and standards. Interface designers should ensure ensure that both the graphic elements and terminology are maintained across similar uh, platforms. For example, an, an icon that represents one category or concept should not represent a different concept when used in a different screen. For example, logo on your page 
should be linked to your homepage as it always does or red colored button is for cancel or green is for go or yes, confirm. A design shouldn't let users wonder whether wonder whether different words, situations or actions mean the same thing. They said, don't forget that people spend 90% of their time interacting with other apps, which means your design should be similar in some way to the other apps or systems. Using best practices and common patterns will eventually result in a much better overall experience. Consistency is one of the strongest contributors to usability. Uh, error of uh, 50s error uh, prevention, even better than good error message is a careful design which prevents a problem from occurring in the first place. Either eliminate error prone conditions or check for them and present users with a confirmation option before they commit to the action. Like in the example, ask the users before they commit the mistake or showing the character limit tweeting or the input doesn't let you write an invalid value. Tweeting invalid value. Uh, good user experience doesn't require the users to recall frequently. Instead, it offers all options and information required to make a choice. Like in the first example here, Google, Google suggestions uh, showing users things they can recognize improves usability over needing to recall items from scratch. The description is minimize the user's memory load by making objects, actions and options visible. The user should not have to remember information from one part of the dialog to another. For the sex second example, almost every messenger application has the chat history, which lets you start the conversation from the point where you left it so that you don't have to recall the conversation hours ago or maybe years ago. A good user interface should offer appropriate functionality bo to both inexperienced and experienced users. Every user is unique. Each have their own different needs and skills. Users should be able to customize or tailor the interface to suit their needs so that frequent actions can be achieved through more convenient means. If you see the example, it's a Photoshop tool shortcuts. It's a example of flexibility and efficiency of use used in helping experienced user, or should I say professional users of Photoshop in this case. You've all heard about the minimalistic life, minimalism, minimal design, etc. It's all about having only the necessary. For all our case here, dialogues, any design content uh, should not contain information which is irrelevant or rarely needed. Every extra unit of information in a dialogue can competes with the relevant units of information and diminishes their relative visibility. Uh, it's a fancy way of saying that if you have lots of trash, well, I mean stuffs in your design that, you, that people, I mean, you don't use or rarely used, you can't see or find the important and useful things and their value. This person um, a French writer, he said, perfection is achieved not when uh, not when there is nothing more to add, but there but when there is nothing to left to take away. Uh, can you see the difference between uh, do and do not? 
The operation could be completed. Error domain. Error 20. What? This message can't help the users, can it? Designers should assume users are unable to understand technical terminology. Error messages should almost always be expressed in plain language to ensure nothing gets lost in translation. Like the green one here. Uh-oh, the file you tried to upload is a type we don't understand. Supported for imaged formats are JPEG, PNG and GIF. Like that. You get the idea, right? Uh, finally, the final one is help and documentation. Let's see the example first. Uh, if a user is making a purchase online, like in the shop payment, in the right side example here, the guide, a size guideline for the product will help you help users when making a purchase. Like if you click the Himgenius hour here, <laughs> you will be able to see the guideline image as uh, as it's shown here. Uh, for more, uh, showing them uh, the return and refund policy or a link to it uh, on, on the product page with be more beneficial than putting it on the frequently asked question section. Uh, they don't people I mean they don't really go in there go there and read the frequently asked question section. Uh, for the second example here in the left side, if you mouse over the question mark icon you will be able to see some help and guidelines. For the description, uh, even though it is better if the system can be used without documentation, it may be necessary to provide help and documentation. Any such information should be easy to search, focused on the user's task, list concrete steps to be carried out and not be too large. Oh. 